Uh, before we get going, can we uh, give a shout out to all the people who technically made this happen today? Let's hear it for them. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you, volunteers. Absolutely. I mean, Incredible. Staff, event staff. Event staff. Yeah. Yes. The person who brought the bowl. Even. So if you ever see these, if you ever see anyone with the event staff T-shirts on out in the world from now on, you just have to go and say like, yeah. huge praise. So uh, I'm I'm your moderator. I don't even today. have one of those shirts. Do we also? How are we doing on the? How is the stream? It's up. Okay. It's up. Side, up. Oh God, we're on the air. <gasps> okay. Um, well, it's a pleasure to be here. My name's Ray Porter. I, uh, I thank you. Woo. <laughs> and I'd like to do Woo. some like to do some introductions, but uh, Grandma needs her glasses. No. Um, so uh, I would like to introduce to you the additional editor, Dodie Dorn. Yay, Dodie! Uh, wave up everybody over there. You know him, you love him, you can't live without him. VFX supervisor, DJ DJ DJ, 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 legend. Our writer, Chris Terrio. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> Our incredible director, Mr. Zack Snyder. <laughs> My dear friend and a damn fine actor in the soul of this movie, Mr. Ray Fisher. Yes, it is true. And we have uh, we have we have one final uh, person to announce: um, brilliant uh, writer, brilliant director, brilliant actor, and I think the finest Batman I have ever seen, Ben Affleck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have a sh I think we have a sharing mic in our small. That's a little share. We'll share. <laughs> I'll let him scream a little. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's very nice. I don't exactly understand what you're saying, but it seems positive, so I want to say thank you. <laughs> positive group. <laughs> home team. Home crowd. <laughs> So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm meant to kick this off with some questions from the Vero community. I'm going to read those out, and then we're going to uh, just, I guess, basically open it up to questions, discussion, whatever. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. So uh, this first one is from Matt. Uh, this, I, I'm assuming, is to Zach, not to me. The work you and Chris Terrio accomplished in BVS and Justice League was simply brilliant. Do you have any plans to collaborate with Terrio again in future projects? Well, if Chris would have me, of course. It's always a, Very it's always a question man. just of like, you know, he's, he's a busy man. So, you know, look, I love Chris more than anything. He's a genius. So, yeah, of course I would love to work with Chris anytime you want. Well, what's, what's he going to say? I'm sitting right here. <laughs> <laughs> I, hate that, I hate that short little motherfucker. Um, but yeah, of course I collaborate with Zach again. I mean, you know, when we find, Woo! of course. Uh, this is from uh, Stephen Mark Monteith. What other new gods characters did you plan to feature in the JL movies? Because I don't like being alone. Uh, and how much development would they receive? We saw Granny Goodness. So would we have seen the Furies? What about the other members of Dark Side's family? Yeah, for sure. All of them. I'm, I mean, 
he had to really get an invasion force together, and I think he was going to, like, you know, get his own. There was going to be a Christmas album, too, yeah, right? Yeah, really beautiful. Yeah. And a special. <laughs> yeah, I think the answer is. For sure. Uh, uh, yes. gonna, well, the I'm theory's for something. sure. We talked about that a lot. Yeah. I'm going to say something here, Zach, which is that the um, – I've read chatter about the anti-life equation and, you know, how did, how did Upsis, dark side lose it as though it were his keys. But the, um, we would have taken that up in the second episode. He would have understood some apocalyptic betrayals and palace intrigue that would have explained how that all happened. So, so if, if ever, if ever uh, a miracle happens and more of this story is made, um, you'll understand more of, more of that because there was a plan there. So the uh, last Vera question is from Dylan. It says, Cyborg's vision depicts Kilowog dead at the site of the Hall of Justice, but he's not with the Nightmare League in the sequence at the end. Is this implying the existence of numerous Nightmare timelines with the one we see in JL2 just being the final one where Barry successfully activated the cosmic treadmill to warn Bruce in time? Or was it just something you thought would be cool? <laughs> That's pretty fair. It's <laughs> a pretty fair question. Um, I would say uh, that that particular shot, the one, it, you know, in the, the flash moment where he sort of has all those visions of the future, that one, I think, is more impressionistic than the actual hard timeline that you see in the, um, in the final sequence. So I think that that's probably uh, the answer, is that he's seen, I would say, a more metaphorical vision of the future than an actual hard reality in that, in that one sequence. Well, I, I would like to uh, give the most time to you guys uh, as far as questions and things like that. Now, I don't – did we have – Mike set up, or am I being Phil Donahue, literally, and running up and down the... Okay, cool. I just have to be me? Oh, God, help us all. Your, yours was the first hand up, so yes. As long as you can be heard. for Chris and Ben, thank you for being here. Um, so Ben, you were a brilliant Pierre d'Alenzon and you're the best Batman, so just my preface. Um, so your version of Bruce Wayne undergoes this radicalization into this pathological uh, jingoism and then de-radicalization to which he then has to navigate the aftermath of what he's done. And then for Chris, your writing in these films is incredibly politically dense and layered. You've got false flag operations, false testimonies as war propaganda. And, you know, I appreciate your advocacy for whistleblowers in the story, you know, given what's happened to other journalists who have told the truth. So for the both of you, how have these big political topics informed your creative process as storytellers in these films? So starting off with an easy one. That's cool. <laughs> well, there, there's a thing that Bruce says in BVS, which is if there's even a 1% chance that he could destroy the world, then we have to treat it as an absolute certainty. And that seemed to be something that, that was happening in the wars of our time, right? There was this idea that there's an axis of evil, and if there's even a, a, a t minuscule chance that there's going to be a suitcase nuke in New York City, then we have to treat it as a certainty and we have to make war. So that idea that was going through Bruce's head um, was informed by everything that we were looking at in the, in the world. Um, and so we, we self-consciously wanted to ask that question. And then also politically, when you have the character of Kahina Ziri and, you know, intervention in Africa, that's a thing that, that Superman has, has done traditionally, right? Superman intervenes and there are clear good guys and clear bad guys and then, uh, you know, truth and justice save the day. So that was another thing that we wanted to kind of complicate and say, well, what actually happens when Superman intervenes? Um, it seems like, you know, he's intervening to save Lois, but what other lives are affected? Um, Superman says about the danger to Lois, 
think of what could have happened. And she says, think of what did, the, you know, pointing at all the stuff that happened in the village. So that was another um, conscious thing. Not to, not to try to make Superman a, a villain or to say, you know, Superman is wrong, but just to say it's a little more gray and complex than maybe traditionally has been, at least in the films, has traditionally been presented. In some of the comics, there is a lot of shade of gray in Superman and his work. Yeah. Uh, that's one of the things that I love about working with Chris and have for since I met him and got to know him is that he operates as a screenwriter on a lot of different levels simultaneously where you have a plot story that's very keen and you know paced and makes sense and you have character stories that are connected and compelling and interesting and nuanced and oftentimes there are thematic corollaries that don't um, impose themselves and stand out in front of the movie so that it's a screed or that it's didactic but rather it's kind of uh, marbleized into the into those two other elements so that if it's something that you're interested in, if it's something that resonates you uh, with you, it, it works on that level. Additionally, if it's something um, with which you're like about which you're not interested or or aware, like it sort of goes by, and yet there's a kind of like um, I've always get the sense with Chris that the plot is sort of the if the screenwriter is the cat burglar breaking into the house, the plot is sort of the meat that's thrown to the guard dogs while the themes kind of work their way, break their way into the window, so to speak. <laughs> I got oh, wow. Uh, way back yonder, black t-shirt. Third row in. Uh, this is like no good. I need a, I need a, I need like a laser pointer. What is, what is this going on? Raise your hat up in the air. You had a hat in your hand? Yeah, the yes. one with the cryptic you. symbolism on it. Yes, sir. There's a microphone nearby. Yeah. You is there no mic over there? Oh dear. It's a black shirt, but it's How loud can you be? All right. Listen, that's a good question. I think it's fair and it's exciting. And, and look, I love the world. And obviously, um, I've not put a small amount of effort into, the, <laughs> into this um, mythology. And, uh, you know, we, we have done um, not also a small amount of work toward what the eventualities of these um, scenarios might be. Uh, you know, as far as, um, you know, I've had an amazingly, um, the, my experience with you guys and with this material has been incredibly satisfying and um, I, I, I couldn't be happier with, uh, you know, the way that, you know, you guys have been able to um, dig, dig in. You know, it's, we always talk about, like, if you want to go um, deep on these movies and on this mythology, it's there for you, right? Um, and so, yes, am I in, would I be interested in, in whatever medium or whatever way these ideas would continue? Of course I would. But, um, yeah. But, yeah. But, and uh, in the meantime, we, uh, we, we forge ahead and we do what we do. Um, and so, uh, like that. But yes, thank you. Um, but I love this world, and I love these guys that I've gotten to do this with, and um, it's been it's been amazing. So thank you. Um, the jumping up and down. Yeah, there is a mic down here. Come down. I got a good question. I got a good question. Can we judge the As question? As opposed then? to what? 
have um, one question, and Ben Affleck, you're the greatest Batman ever. <laughs> Mr. Snyder, looking at that post credit scene with, uh, you know, Deadshot, what was the plan for Batman's Ben Affleck um, for that story? Um, there was a whole elaborate plan, um, <laughs> uh, which would take up too much time now, and some of which I may have forgotten. But, um, I, you know, I always like that character and talk to Zach about that. And, and, I, and I think there's a um, – my plan for continuing on in this character, at a certain point I got to and kind of found that I thought I wasn't really, you know, the, the – I just felt like, well, I wasn't quite sure if it worked or jived. And I felt like if you have a character like this and you kind of take that on, you want to go forward – you better really be sure and understand it and be confident. And, and certainly as a director, um, you kind of have to be the last person interested in the movie when everyone else is really bored and doesn't want to watch it again and is sick of it and exhausted by the whole process. And I have held myself to this kind of metric where if I'm not really sure I see the precise uh, location on target that I want to hit, I'm not sure I can hit it, but I want to at least know exactly what I'm aiming for. Um, but there's, you know, uh, as all of you have kind of mentioned, there's a spectacular array of, of characters in this universe. And um, and also I think, you know, they are ultimately like, I know that we, we sort of become like attached to them as exist in these particular forms. But I think of, of watching Zach's stuff and whatever he does, I find interesting and enjoyable. It's a kind of manifestation of his work and his art. And with Chris, you know, you see people's, like it doesn't necessarily have to be wearing uh, one face to tell an interesting story. There are certainly, a response to this gentleman's question, there are a lot of different ways to do that. And um, so I don't get too wrapped up and like uh, fixated on that one thing, or at least that's the way I soothe myself. Also, I want to point out that, you know, you have, I mean, this is such a brilliant visual film. And the pacing of it and the tempo of it and everything is so incredible. And we have DJ here and we have Dodie here. Does anyone have questions for them? Yes, here in the white shirt. Loud. That's okay. I can defer. I'm sure they have What did I just say? Then. All right, yes. No, you're not stretch. You're going to have to just be loud. Oh, you're coming. I see. Hello. Uh, Guys, oh my gosh, this is cool. Um, Zach, how close are we, and will we ever be able to get to see that John Stewart Green Lantern deleted scene? <laughs> well, it, uh, would I ever be able to? You know, listen, um, I don't have it right now. Um, there was a, uh, you know, property was returned, um, but uh, it does exist. <laughs> if you won't say anything, that's cool. I get. I know you won't. Of course, you, I mean, well, it's only live. Turn off the cameras. But, um, yeah, so um, I would have to say, look, um, I think I just me saying Wayne did an amazing job in the little scene, and I really love him. And it was nice of him to come over to the house and shoot it with me. Um, and, I, you know, he, he's an amazing actor. And so, uh, he yeah, he's a cool guy. But, yeah, as far as... See, it is. I don't know when you could, that will ever happen. But, you know, never say never. So, of course, there you have it. <laughs> yeah, I will try to. Oh, there's a mic over there now. Fantastic. Make your way over to the microphones, if you like. Um, so, just to, uh, yes, you, you right there. Yes. Do you want to get on the mic or no? Okay, not loud, but you were partying last night. I'm supposed to repeat everything, right? Well, you know, come on. So this is an editing question because, like you were saying, the pacing on this goes wild. In, in more ways, you have these incredibly somber moments that you sort of let play out, and then you have flash sequences that do these crazy, crazy some odd things. So from an editing perspective, what was sort of going through your head in order to sort of evoke – various emotions of whether it's excitement or these crazy applause moments that you'll get from the entire crowd? It's a great question, yeah. Uh, so the question was about the editing and, and to, like, um, 
what's what's like going to make it really evocative, essentially within the, yes. Yeah, that's actually both of us. Yeah. You, yeah, because I. Well, that I sequence, think, especially that he's talking about. I mean, the flash running back time sequence you're talking right, about is per se that. or whatever. That Cross was, the board. Our inspiration was Cher, right? Well, mostly. Yeah. If you could turn back. If you could turn back time, you guys have heard the song. That's what I thought. Yes. Go, Doty. Well, no, I, I have to say, and, and they introduced me as the additional editor because I was standing on the shoulders of a very great editor, David Brenner. And Woo! Amazing man. And, uh, and then we had Carlos Castillon uh, keeping it, it safe and warm for the time when Zach was away from the project and I was lucky enough to come on and be the one to help realize his unicorn and bring it, uh, let it get born. So, so many of the scenes were already formed when I came on and uh, I mainly worked with that material and, and that's why I was trying to throw it to DJ because that particular scene already existed when I came on, the, the uh, time warp scene. But the time warp... Amazing. Well, the time warp... Amazing! Is, is <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I agree. It's amazing. Um, but my memory is it existed because... Can I say that? Because we made it exist alongside... Yeah, it wasn't... A version of the movie it, where it didn't exist. It wasn't so. supposed to <laughs> exist. Like, of course, we had a big... Um, I mean, an argument. We had... There was a time when uh, the discussion of whether or not to have Flash run time back was a big, you, you know, the studio didn't want to do that, that bit. That, there was a, that <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> so it was, a, it was difficult. We had to manufacture, like, you know, it was almost one of these things where I had said, look, let me show you it and it'll be cool and you guys are going to want to do it. And they said, okay, cool. And well, you know, the, <laughs> they were confused <laughs> that they were confused. Yeah, there was a lot of confusion. Um, but regardless, I mean, I think the good news is that we had shot. Luckily, we had had shot enough material of Ezra running on the treadmill and doing his thing and, um, you know, saying those lines about, you know, uh, dad, I'm one of them, you know, that whole thing. We had that. And, and thank God we did because there was no way we could have manufactured that, but it was good that we had. And we post biz the whole thing for you, so that's what you got well, when, when you came on to it. Right, yeah, and and I have to say, it's very, very emotional material, so we let it play as emotional, which is an interesting thing to create something so emotional in the middle of an action beat, because it is an action beat, but you have to let the sound go away and let the voice be the dominant thing with the music, and that was that was what we were doing. Oh, mm -hmm. Does that mean time's up? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> the bar is closing, I guess. Or I don't yeah, know. Bar. No, I'll have a double martini. <laughs> yeah, we got to be careful because you know Super Mario is coming in here any second, so we got to be ready. <laughs> yeah, thank God. Exactly. Right. I have paid no love to this side of the room. Where? Where? Well, God. <coughs> Pesky thing. Gentlemen, right there. Yes. I cut that. <laughs> That's cool. More than, you're not talking about the Jesus Batman, just Batman, or, or the Jesus Joker, just Joker in general. Yeah, no, there was like, uh, these guys were on a mission. It was a kind of a mission movie moment or uh, beginning of where like a, you know, it was like a, it was like a buddy picture. You know where the where the two where the two the two the two protagonists were like at odds, and they had to like work out their differences over the over their travels across the country. No, no, but I mean, in a way, that's what you could see. In some ways, that's what they're what they're on about. You know, they're on this little this little journey. And I, I guess you know, for me, 
one of the th- reasons why I wanted to do that scene was because I felt like, um, and I and I was and I'm I was really happy with the way that these two guys, that uh, the, the Batman and Joker in that scene, and it's only a little taste. Um, I just felt like it was rude for us to have gone through this entire um, sort of DC universe with the two characters that should be, you know, with each other at odds, I guess, um, having not really coexisted on film in, in that way. And I really, and I had in my mind wanted that to be part of the movies as they went forward. And I just really felt like this scene was important, you know, for this, for this universe. And, uh, Ben was gracious, gracious enough to come and do it, and Jared and Jared and, Jer- and put on the cape one more time. Oh my God! Uh, and then Jared also, um, you know, is uh, is it was awesome, and 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 it took some convincing, but was really uh, it was really fun. It was fun to do the, the bit, you know. Yes, you had a you had one. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I'll sit down. Yeah, just so you know. <laughs> uh, hello, everyone. My questions for everyone in this panel, including our gracious host. Uh, my name is Carlos, and I just want to say thank you all for doing this. The foundation we're supporting, the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, that's a battle I've struggled with personally. And these movies, you know, the stories you've directed, the characters you've embowed, the things you've written, edited, it, and just being a part of in general, it gives hope to so many people way more than just this theater of loving fans. These stories speak to us, and even though we can't fly, we can't fight, no matter who we are. And I just wanted to ask you guys on a personal level, for every one of you, give me a sentence answer. On a personal level, how do you feel knowing that you're part of something that gives hope to so many people that really need it? Um, It's the greatest honor of my life to be here, to be a part of this, to be included in this, uh, to, to be a few people's nightmares and all of that sort of thing, you know. Uh, it is and has been and will continue to be the, just absolutely the greatest honor. And I buy every T-shirt that ever comes up for AFSP, and I hope you do too. I guess for me, um, yeah, it, like, you know, we, make the, we do these things, we make this giant thing, but then to have it have, you know, and I've had the pleasure of having like a lot of, um, you know, interactions with people who get I get to hear their stories and get to understand what they've gone through. Just like, you know, has it impacted our uh, families, and um, you know, so that sharing for me is incredibly moving and really lets me know that there is, you know, there is not only is there work to be done, of course, but being proud of the work that we are doing and the progress that we are making, you know, there's always like, it's a hope thing, you know, and I think that that, yep. And I think that that is the, that for me is like incredible, like again, amazing honor. And like, you know, I, I, I love that you guys enjoy the movie and, and then I, and, and I feel like it's the smallest thing I can do for, you know, to, to, because I, I really, you know, love the outreach that everyone gives and it's, it's amazing. I can take both mics. I, it, to, to mimic what's been said, it's, it's an honor. It is, and it's also a great responsibility, I think. I, for me, I've learned a lot from playing this character. I've learned a lot from the people that have supported this film. I, you know, it's the culminating phrase that I think encapsulates it best is, I'm not broken and I'm not alone. And in myriad ways, you guys have shown me and one another that you are not alone and that anything is possible uh, when you put, your co- put the collective together to go ahead and tackle a problem. And so for anybody out there struggling, 
Uh, for those of you who are struggling now, for those of you who struggled in the past, for those of you who may know somebody who is going through it, just please do your best to iterate and reiterate to them that they are not broken and they are not alone. And uh, make sure that you direct them to the resources like the AFSP uh, that exist out there. Um, thank you for everything you guys have done. Thank you very much for what you said. I have a lot of admiration and respect for the bravery it takes and sense of self to stand up and talk openly. I think that's extremely helpful um, and good. And thank you. And uh, both any association with an uh, effort like this is, is an honor, certainly, and a, um, I, a kind of a similar way, you know, I could sort of look at my own life, you know, in a lot of different ways, but the truth is, I'm old now, right, I've done 55 or 60 movies, but the movie that people, the character that people most commonly approach me about, in my own first-person experience, is undeniable as this character in these movies, and it clearly has an enormous reach and impact on people, it means a great deal to people, and that's, um, I think, the only appropriate reaction to that is a sort of gratitude and, and humility, a gratitude that I owe Zach for bringing me into this project, for Chris, who wrote, Ray, and everyone who worked on this, and, and to the fans who, um, you know, without whom it doesn't come to life. And I, I appreciate and hope it's true that it, these, like, kind of fables, these stories the, that, that can in ways... Um, sometimes we're not even aware of, you know, be moving and meaningful to people. And if that's the case, I would, I would just say I'm humbled. Well, well first, thanks for being so candid about, about that. Um, I, because uh, I, I relate very deeply to everything you're saying. Um, this, in this film, every single one of the major characters is dealing with lost everyone, you know, Lois, Martha, Diana, Arthur, um, Barry, Bruce, and um, so that became the important heart of the film of how to take in loss, take in the darkness that's trying to pull you down and to answer affirmatively and to fight back, um, you know, fight back against it. So all those things, um, I'm grateful if anyone feels them because they were deeply felt on the um, on the end of us who, who are making it. I mean, you can't make a movie that has emotion in it unless you have sat alone with those characters and with those thoughts and figured out some of that stuff for yourself. So it, uh, it makes me really happy if it lands anywhere. So thank you. Um, I guess for me, I just feel lucky to be asked by my friend Zach and Deb to be a part of this, and uh, that whole the whole journey getting to the end, to the end of the Zack Snyder Justice League cut, and the effort of that work. It's it's emotion. It's very emotional, cathartic. Uh, I wish we could do more, you know, because I think it's there's a lot of story left to tell. Uh, but the thing that that I kind of take with me is, and and everybody's efforts through this organization is. It's my first time yesterday being on a panel and meeting a lot of you afterwards. And uh, I'm just, I'm inspired by you guys being inspired by what we've done. I think it's, it, like Ben said, it's a very humbling thing and something that uh, I think was unexpected. Uh, for me, it's personal, uh, a personal note. So thanks, everybody, for you know, paying attention. <laughs> What they said. <laughs> uh, 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 but, oh, yes, go ahead. I, I, I um, you know, one of the things that I was doing was uh, restoring a lot of things for Zach that were very important to him in the film. And I keep uh, coming back to the concept of life affirming and, and acceptance and um, the scene with Wonder Woman where the little girl after the explosion says, uh, I want to be like you when I grow up in. She says, uh, you can be anything you want to be. And that concept is something that comes through in everything that Zach does. It's very, very life-affirming. And for me as a collaborator, it was very exciting to be in Zach's orbit and then notice all these badass women all around him. <laughs> badass characters, badass producers, 
badass first AVs, all women who are just uh, embraced by him and really a huge part of the process. And I feel fortunate to be one of those half badass women. <laughs> Full badass. Full badass. badass. Half badass. That's funny. <laughs> Uh, Please put it to a red hat. Yeah, well, I'm seeing, I'm seeing this. Is it a pink shirt? I don't want to offend. Wonder Woman. It's Wonder Woman. Oh, hello. Yes, please. Uh, loud or get on a mic? Ben. Thank you very much. I, you know, um, there, there were a number of them that I was kind of exploring, and the plans were to, you know, like, I mean, make interesting, nuanced, complex characters, uh, and, and particular for the character you mentioned. And I didn't really, I, I, I kind of feel like either you do, I mean, I'm just going to get into my own preference here, which is, but either you do like a kind of massive kind of one villain that is so formidable, you just can't imagine how it is that your protagonist is going to be able to to overcome it, or you have to sort of really populate kind of a, like you know these you know like uh, you know the injustice like these big group villains that where you get to have all these different characters. So I was at the time really trying to kind of hone in and focus on that character and um, get into to depth and, and detail about it to to make him seem as as impressive as I, as I felt like there was the uh, opportunity to do. Um, and I, other than that, that's the only detail I have for you. <laughs> way, way, way back in the back there, in the back corner. Is that a corner. that corner? Back corner. I'm see. Yes, hello, you. Yes, hi. I think a mic is probably a good idea. Yeah. Hi, I'm Christian, and I'm an art center student in film. This is a question for you. If you could go back and give yourself, your younger self, advice, what would it be? Sorry, could you repeat? Yeah, no, I got it. He said, what would I do if I went back and met my younger, what would the advice I would give to my younger self? Like, am I caught my art center self? Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, I, I have no regrets and I have no, I feel like everything's gone, um, you know, the experiences I've had, you know, and it's hard to say like, oh, you know, um, you know, if you did this, everything would go much better. And yet, I'm sure there's advice I could give to my younger self that would that would make things be smoother sometimes. But you know, the you know the bumps are what make you kind of who you are, and so you need it. So it's hard to like the idea of like telling yourself to do something different is kind of like not then you're not you. But I would say, though, but just as advice <laughs> for a young film student, of course, my always my advice is, you know, you are the thing. Like, you, your point of view is the commodity that you have. The way you see is the, is it, no one else has that but you. And so, you, however you exercise that, do it to its fullest. You know, don't be afraid of it. Don't shy away from it. If you think it's weird, it doesn't matter. It's cool. So that, that to me is uh, the thing I always say, you know, you're the, you're, you're the only you there is. So, you know, we, I want to see what you do. Uh, in the waving, uh, in the, uh, is that a black jacket back there? That'd be you. Yes. 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 <laughs> Loud as you can. Or maybe that's enough. You got or, enough. yeah. <laughs> A couple of show tunes, contrasting monologue. Yeah. What was that? I don't know. <laughs> Not on. Shout it. Nope, shout it. Oh, now you're on. So 
we didn't have a question. It was right. No question at all. Yes, hand that to our friend over there. <laughs> yeah, um, there you go. Good job. <laughs> okay, does anybody not have any job related? Excellent. Uh, yeah. You know. Um, yeah. I don't have any work. We're about to go on strike. Oh, this is so rough. I'm trying to be like equal. What do we got here? Waving furiously in the white in the center in the back there. Yes. Uh, so, uh, you know, I felt really welcomed and really invited pretty early on in the process. I knew things were going to go swimmingly when I showed up for my test for BVS uh, in Detroit. It was around Easter, and uh, I hop out of the SUV, and, you know, I'm a little bit nervous, right? It's my first test for anything, really. And uh, I hear a voice behind me go, right. I turn around, and it's Zach, and I go, yo, Zach. And we just take this elevator ride up, and I'm just like, oh, this is just, this is a dude like me. Okay, cool. We chopped it up about comic books, granny goodness, all the, like, nuances of, like, really just silly and geeky stuff. And I was like, you know, this is, the, I feel like I'm amongst my people, if that makes any sense. And so uh, by the time we got into filming for BVS, I, you know, Zach, he was like, hey, you want to see what we're shooting today? I was like, yeah, cool. And so I ended up meeting Ben during that sequence where they were, uh, was it the graveyard sequence where the bat pops out of the mausoleum? Oh, right. They were filming that. <laughs> and so I ended up getting to meet a lot of folks before we even got to set together. So it ended up taking a lot of the edge off for me because I'm like, oh, you know, I meet Jason for the first time. He picks me up and he just bear hugs me. And I'm like, okay, all right. <laughs> That's this guy, all right? I uh, got to meet Gull. I got to meet everybody except for Henry beforehand. But, uh, you know, I will say across the board, everybody was really welcoming, really gracious, and just really excited to be there and get the work done. And I think it, it all trickles down from the top, you know, just in how those environments get established. So uh, long answer short, uh, I felt more than ready um, because, you know, folks believed in me to do the job that I was there to do. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, sir, right here. Loud as you can. Uh, question for DJ. What were the challenges with the Batmobile shooting the parademons? What kind of challenges did that present? Well, I mean, in some ways, in some ways it was easier than in BBS because in BBS, Patrick's Batmobile could actually drive around and do stuff for real. So we were anchored with a lot of reality there, but we couldn't go to Pajarnoff because we were in London shooting. So that ended up being uh, pretty much a virtual sequence except for some stuff that we shot with Ben in the cockpit of the thing. And when Jason Momoa jumped off of the Batmobile and yelled out loud, Momoa, as he jumped into the stunt <laughs> bath. They never forget. Uh, so, so, yeah, it was... That's not in the movie, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so... We should have kept it, at least. And, and also, too, I think, you know, we, like, labored forever in... Actually, we were doing pre-production on that sequence while we were shooting, so it was really difficult, but we labored forever on how to get all those major beats right for that chase. And uh, there's just a lot of pre for it and that w rolled right into a lot of virtual production right away. So it, it was very challenging to make it look real, but uh, I'm satisfied with the way it came out because it's pretty fun. Yeah, just the, uh, just this shot, just a little sequence alone of like, you know, uh, shooting the smokestack and it falling over and then how to roll and crush all the parademons and the that movie lets us skid around and face backwards. It was, a, it, was a, it was a simple thing. Like yeah, that. it was a lot of like it was constantly. We were. I was like, oh no, then it ends up going backwards. I'm like, yeah, that's cool because now he's pointing backwards. And you can shoot the rest of the parademons out there today. Yeah, it was, just, it, was good. it was a little bit of that. I, did we have a model or anything? I thought we had a little model, but maybe we didn't. Oh no, it's me.
Awesome. Yes. Good name. At More Dawn of the Dead again? Dead. Oh, another one. Sorry, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, that's right. By the way, I love that movie. That's one of my favorites. I love Peckinpah. You know, he's one of my one of my film heroes. Wild Bunch is a great movie. I think they did recently do a remake of the Wild Bunch. Did they not? I don't think it's ever come out. Is it still? Is it still? It was, it was oh, so maybe they haven't done it. Um, so yeah, we'll look into it. I'll ask them. Have you thought about Toxic Avenger? Yeah, oh, nice. Toxic Avenger. Yeah. Yeah. Zach, you could remake The Godfather. Oh, yeah. Remake The Godfather. <laughs> I'm hearing some amazing I'm, things I'm, over here. Um, but yes, standing there like the Statue of Liberty. Yes, sir. You, yeah, right on. Hey, Justin. Hey, Justin. Obviously, it was very convincing. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, this the, I, this part is a unique part because uh, um, you know so many uh, excellent actors have played it, and filmmakers have done it, and the mythology extends all the way, you know, down through decades after decades from this like. You know the Adam West TV series, and you know you the cartoons and stuff on up to the. It's really you know amazing uh, you know films and 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 art about it. Um, so it's much more daunting in a way than like because the other stuff you do, anything else you do, you're, if you're doing it for the first time, you know there's nothing else to hold you up against. You know, compare you to you, there are no expectations. You have the liberty of just going out there and sort of defining it, for better or for worse, for the, when people see it. Um, and the, there's a similar kind. Of, there's a double-edged sword with a part like this because you have a lot of tailwind and a lot of you know, people have a lot of goodwill and enthusiasm and, uh, around these characters that have existed in our culture for a long time, but also they have a lot of expectations. So I definitely um, spent a lot of time sort of uh, thinking about it and angsting about it. But like all the performances that I ended up. Um, you know, being able to, to sleep at night around it, it, it came down to like actually sort of what Ray said. And, uh, you know, Zach creates an extremely comfortable, you know, fluid atmosphere. And I think for me as a director, uh, that's the most important thing that I try to do. I don't think I can succeed or actors can't succeed without that, or at least they can't be as good as they can possibly be. And Zach is as good as anybody, if not better, that I've ever worked with at creating that environment, which is extremely important to feel like you're welcome to succeed. So it took away a lot of the uh, thought, because the thing about preparation is they say you just have to, you know, you do it and then you have to throw it away. And the throwing it away is uh, so that it seems life like obviously natural and, and um, you know, and, and kind of lived in. Uh, and Zach made it easy for me to do that. Uh, so thank you. I will say as an actor, uh, having a safe space to play in is really important and I experienced that not only with Zach but you won't remember this Ben but you directed me in Argo I'm how could the, I forget I'm the uh, PA that brings in John Goodman ah yes and it's awesome. even that tiny even that tiny role I felt like I had room to play so thank you oh that's good thank you very much uh, oh, wow wow um, now, they're, now they're having time to think of stuff. Now they've had time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, well, <laughs> if you were on a desert island. Um, right. Uh, oh, my God. This is this, – Zach, what do I do, man? What do you mean? What's wrong? Who do I pick? Red, red cap in the back. Oh, red cap in the back. You're the master of ceremonies. Oh, right. Oh, red Damn. cap. Too kind.
I mean, for me, I have a real, um, I don't know, I, it, it's been my experience that I just go like, I pretty quickly, I'm like, oh yeah, that's, a, that, that's the person. Like, that's the guy. Get that guy. Or like, you know, I see a casting tape and I'm like, yeah, that's right. And I feel like my gut is probably the best. I, and I know that's stupid. Like, oh, your gut, my gut instincts are like, anyway, I know, but it's still, it's not really very helpful for anyone else. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, I feel like, you know, the, and the casting in this movie, um, you know, just, I think across the board, um, you know, those, these guys have done, obviously, even just, at, we forget that like at the time, that the movie w that we put the movie together, um, you know, pretty much, you know, these guys like, p you know, Ezra, you know, I just was like, Ezra's cool. I just want Ezra to be the Flash. You know, it's like that. That was kind of how I did it. Like Gal, I was like, oh Gal, we tested a bunch of different actresses, and Gal was just, I, and from the beginning, I was like, I want Gal. And they were like, oh, okay, well, we should do, you know, we need to see a bunch of people because, you know, it's like a big part of Wonder Woman. And she's not like super big star or anything. And I was like, okay, well, I just feel like it's right. And then we tested her with Ben. They did a little scene. And I was like, see? Actually, <laughs> what's cool is in the, I looked at it the other day. There's like in the little video that we did in the little audition. Uh, I don't know if you remember this, but then like the, at the end of the take, it was a one shot too. It was like over him. It was like we did it because whenever you do a like for the because it was a before the film was made and you don't want to expose yourself to the studio too much, right? And you don't want him to say like, "Oh, is this what it's going to look like?" Uh, you know, like I don't like this. And I'm like, "It's not about that. We're we're just trying to do an audition." You know, it's like any chance for them to not comment on anything but the thing you want them to comment on. That's you try to do that. So I was like, "Okay, we'll do this as one take." even though it's like starts out as a two shot and it was in the little scene, it's like um, Gal's Wonder Woman is waiting for Bruce Wayne and he, she is sort of, he's walking down the street. We shot it all on like a sort of fake set. It didn't look like a street, but it was like, there's some cars parked around and whatever. And then he would walk up and it was a two shot and then it was a, it was a, it was a two, it was a tight two and then it turned into an over and it was just the sort of a single on Gal. And they were kind of talking about like, you know, you know, he, you got to stop drinking and all this like really intense stuff and like what's the matter with you, Bruce and blah blah. She was really going at him, and I and I and <laughs> at the end of the day, and the the one good one, uh, like because it's on Ben's over Ben's shoulder like this, and Gal was here, and at the end of the day, he turns around and looks in the camera, he's like, okay, <laughs> like I don't think we have to do this anymore, <laughs> and it was cool because like that's the. Sh you know, and of course, the reaction was so clean that, like, I left it in for the studio. So they were like, oh. I, I was an unwitting accomplice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I remember that's the only time that's ever happened to me where I was like, that's obvious. Yeah, like, why, why, why are we, we, what are we yeah, doing? Yeah. There's nothing else to Can do. I go home Maybe now? Done that with the <laughs> yeah. No, it was cool. It was really cool. But, like, and I think that those things, I guess for me, it's like there is, and it's impossible to say. I mean, it was just like, you know, when we were talking about, um, Christina Wren um, during, Man, during Man of Steel I was like literally watching TV I saw this Humbus commercial I'm like that girl I want that girl in the movie so they, you know, we had to track her down and like find her but I think that that you know I don't know it, just, it seems it's, it's it, it, I, I don't know how but it just it, an instinct it, I mean I think that what Zach's like maybe humble to say is that there's a sort it's taste right like and but those have told me about directing and I always heard before I directed directors like not the old adage is, you know, directing is 90% casting. And I was skeptical of that. And as uh, years have gone by, I've become more and more convinced of it. And it is, a, uh, as you look at all these actors who Zach cast and how good they are and what they've gone on to do, it's a testament to Zach's taste. And his taste is very, as he says, intuitive. I don't know if you can learn it or teach it. He has a feeling. It, he has sort of what being like a filmmaker with a point of view is. As soon as he sees that thing, it bounces off him. He kind of, it's very wonderful to work with somebody who's not clouded by a bunch of other thoughts or opinions or what are people going to say or what are they going to do or what are they going to say, you know, or how many followers of that, whatever it is, you know, immediately um, 
and that's, you know, he knows, and he has an opinion and a strong one, and that's kind of what you want as an actor very much, whether it's good or bad. Like, do you, am I, are we doing this or are we doing that? You want me for the movie or you don't? You know what I mean? Both are fine. I just want to know. Let's not do 15 auditions, you know what I mean, and do a whole circus. And that's the one of the beautiful things about Zach and his process is that he is um, – works by instinct and decisive and and absolutely self-assured of that and it's a very calming thing to have in a director and go, okay he knows where we're going so I'm going to follow him wow 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 blue shirt right there waving both arms is this going to be the last one Guys, this is going to be the last one. This is going to be the last uh, question, guys. I'm so Super sorry. Mario, you guys could stay for Super Mario. You can't actually stay. They are you throwing can't. us out for Mario. So after the ap- after this after this, it's going to be ready the Armada. All right, so go for it. I think he's dead. Um, I mean, I love him, but I don't think he made it. He put up a great fight, though. It was awesome. Wait till you see DJ. It's pre vis of that. It's amazing. It's really, Mike, it's on a small scale, but it's incredible. One more, give him one more quick. One more quick, fast. The guy oh yeah. behind the camera. Yeah, go. Jody. Jody. That's what my. By the way, that's what Siri Jody. calls her when I ask Siri to go. <laughs> oh. Well, okay, uh, first of all, working on an action sequence for Zach is completely different because it is so co- well choreographed in advance, and his stunt team actually shoots their version of the entire scene and gives it to me before I even have the dailies of the scene. So it's a very, very intricate process that they do, and I'm just trying to better them. <laughs> so. Uh, I'm assuming that's okay to say how how uh, yeah. how well. That's what we hope for. Yeah, how well thought out it is in advance. But it, it, without that, barring that, I just take every single take and take the. I mean, a, a shot is probably a minute or less long, and I cut it down to the tiniest little piece that is usable from everyone, and I just press play and sit back and find the one that hits me the most, and then I put them all together. I mean, it's pretty much that I don't want to say simple but it's that's the process and then afterwards once it's all together then it it kind of you can throw the cards up in the air again a little bit if you want but usually it's very much uh, you know a lot of people think cutting action is easier than cutting dialogue scenes for good reason there you have it thank Thank you you so much thank you all thank you very much Again, thank you guys so much uh, for coming out. I appreciate your support, and uh, we love you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.